Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel, and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, but generally talk a lot of bollocks about type of gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a so called classic designed by Alan R. Moon. It is a gateway entry level train game called Ticket to Ride. We're going to be sort of going through the first two iterations of this, the vanilla Ticket to Ride and also the sequel Ticket to Ride Europe. We don't actually own any of the other ones, but we have played a couple of the other expansions. So we're going to be focusing on these two copies. And in this game, you'll be drawing cards, trying to complete routes that will give you points that will allow you to win the game. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like, and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Ticket to Ride is still worth playing today and in the future. So remember, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that little section down there, down below, you know what I mean? And we'll see you after this. So, Ticket to Ride. How'd you play this game? So the first thing you're going to do in this game, you're going to lay the board out in the centre of the table, obviously. And then what you do, you give every player a starting hand of four cards from the main deck, right? And also what you do, you'll shuffle the root deck and you will deal three to each player. And then what you do, you'll shuffle the deck of long root cards and then you'll deal one to each player and everyone will get an opportunity to keep at least two of their tickets so you can have a long route if you want you can have a short route you can mix and match you have to have a minimum of two but you can have more than that if you like and the way this works is if you've completed your routes by the end of the game you'll get the amount of points that's listed on the route card and if you don't complete them then you will lose that many points so it's very important to get this right at the beginning. So every player will be given a bag of little train pieces, nice little cute train pieces, you know what I mean? And they'll put them in front of you and you'll be using these train pieces to put on a board to complete routes, right? And then what you'll do, you'll draw the first five cards of the train deck and you'll make a sort of an offer of cards on the table, you know what I mean? So the way this game works is on your turn, you'll get an option of either drawing some cards or you'll be able to complete a route. There's only just the only two options you're going to get. So if you take the first option of drawing cards, you can either take two cards from the face up display, right? Or you can take two cards from the deck blind. And the deck is comprised of different cards of different colours. And there's also a wild card that refers to all the colours in the game. So the second option that you've got in this game is you can complete a route. And if you've got in your hand enough cards, cards that match the spaces between two destinations then you can discard those cards and complete that route and depending on how long the route is you will score points so if you complete a route that's just one carriage long then you get one point if you complete a route that is two carriages long you get two points if you complete a route that's three carriages long you get four points four carriages long is seven points six carriages long is 15 points and eight carriages long is a whopping 21 points yeah so you've also got the option of drawing destination tickets you can draw three new cards but you have to keep at least one of them we don't find that people tend to do this very often when they're playing ticket ride. so i don't know what it's in here so i don't know who knows so you'll notice that on the board as well some of the routes are double and that doesn't really mean anything both routes are available the only thing you've got to remember is that one player cannot complete both routes so in ticket to ride europe there's a couple of add-on little rule things you've got ferries and you've got tunnels yeah so ferries are the gray routes that link destinations across the sea and the way that ferries work is for every little black bar that you got on the route you have to play a locomotive card which is a wild card in addition to the set number of cards that you have to play for in your hand right and tunnels work a little bit differently when you're claiming a tunnel route you first have to lay down the required number of cards that's dictated by the game board and then what you'll have to do from the draw deck draw the top three cards and if any of those cards match the color of the cards that you laid down to complete the tunnel then you get obviously i don't know what happens you get lost in a tunnel or something but yeah you, you don't complete that route you take all your cards back into your hand you have to wait until your next turn to have another crack at it right so yeah that's tunnels for you and the, the last thing that you've got that differentiates this from other versions of ticket to ride is that you've got stations yeah and what you can do with stations during the game because in the first edition of ticket to ride alan armin found that he you could block certain 
routes by getting there first. So you introduce stations in, in tickets to ride Europe. And what you do is you place your station on the board. That allows you to use that location on the board as if it was your own. So you can pass through somebody else's station that's connected. You know what I mean? So there you go. So what you do, you'll keep doing this until one person is down to their last two trains. And then everyone will get one last turn and then that will signal the end of the game and what you'll do you'll look at the victory point track around the edge of the board and then what you'll do you'll add up all your completed routes and you'll add that to your victory point total and then the player with the longest route on a carriage by carriage basis will then score the longest route card you'll add that to your score and then the player with the most victory points will be the winner of ticket to ride so what do we like about tickets to ride. So the first thing and the most apparent thing that we like about tickets to ride is the component quality is amazing, right? Yeah, it's, it's Days of Wonder, what do you expect? It's early Days of Wonder. When was this made? 2004, something like that. So when this was released, this was absolutely astonishing. People hadn't seen anything like it. The quality of the plastic trains was super. The card had a nice linen texture feel. The board was bright and colorful. Wonderful card stock. Super components, what more could you want from a board game? Top notch stuff. So the second thing that we like about this game is that there's nothing better than completing that killer route. You know, saving up your cards, people are looking at your hand, seeing how many cards you got, right? And they're thinking, oh, that sneaky git, he's gonna go for the, the Swedish route, you know, the Norwegian route, yeah? And then in this game, then plonking your cards down and completing that killer route. That really does get me sort of excited. So the third thing, that we like about Ticket to Ride is the way that this game is the perfect gateway game for like families, small kids, and those train geeks out there, you know what I mean? Because this is the perfect way to wet your feet if you want to get into games like Railways of the World or even 1830 up here. So where it, it, the rule set is very, very basic, and basically all you're doing is you're drawing cards and then trying to claim routes, that's all you're going to be doing. It, sort of eases you into the train game universe and then you can go into these these two games and maybe get something a little bit more complicated under your belt so the fact that this game is the perfect gateway game for families and i've got a young family that really do like this game it's perfect so the final thing that we like about tickets to ride is the sheer variety of maps that have been produced over the years and there's something for everyone in there you've got the united kingdom map you've got the Poland map, you've got a French map, you've got the India map, you've got different maps that take place in the United States where you've got obviously got a Europe one. And the thing that makes these maps special is that every single map has got its own little nuance, its own little rule set that adds to the game. Like the United Kingdom one has got stocks and shares, I think, and all that sort of thing. Obviously, the Europe one has got the stations and all that stuff. So there's a, a, a wide variety of maps, and it's not like they just sat there and thought, you know what, we just get a map of England and we just plonk some squares on it. They actually sat down and thought, how can we make this better? And you can't ask for more than that when you're buying an expansion. So what don't we like about Ticket to Ride? So the first thing that we don't like about Ticket to Ride is firstly, it's about trains, right? And I hate trains. I can't tell you why I hate trains on a public forum, but I hate trains and that, that's a major downer for me but that's a personal thing talking about a more general thing is that the random card draw in this game sucks what you're going to get in this game you're going to be sitting there you're going to be thinking well i can't complete a route so the only other option i've got is to draw cards yeah and you're thinking well I, there's no cards there that i want to draw so you're going to draw blind you don't pick up anything you want and you're going to end up with a massive board of cards getting frustrated because you haven't got anything in your hand that you can use you're going to have to waste your next turn picking cards up and it won't be until the following round that you can actually complete a route and this has to be one of the most frustrating games on the face of the planet. In fact, it's so simple that you can't even plan ahead and plan anything. You can't even strategize while you're waiting to actually execute your killer move. It drives me out of the wall. I'm getting agitated as I'm talking. So the second thing about Ticket to Ride that we don't like is that the routes are sort of a bit pointless really because nobody that I know of Maybe it's different for you, but nobody I know of goes for the long routes and nobody will go for the short routes. Everybody goes for those eight to 10 point routes because they're the most easy to complete 
that give you the most points, yeah? There's no point in going for those 20 or 21 point routes because you know that you can't complete them. And then there's no point in going for those meagre routes because they're not going to give you enough points at the end of the game. So everybody just goes for the middle ground and it makes the choosing of routes and even drawing new routes completely pointless because you don't know what you're going to draw out of the deck when you go for those extra routes and you don't know whether you're going to be able to complete them or not. So, you know, drawing routes, the actual route cards themselves, pointless. So the third thing that we don't like about Tickets to Ride is talking about Tickets to Ride Europe specifically. We don't think that the station mechanism fixes the blocking problem that we mentioned about the first ticket to ride because where these three stations are worth a maximum of 12 points at the end of the game you've got to make sure that you use these stations on low scoring routes like the one or the two carriage routes yeah and there's not many of them around and once they're gone there's no point in wasting your stations on one of the more lucrative routes because it's going to knock four points off of that route is it worth it i don't know but it doesn't fix that blocking problem because people are going to be making a beeline for those crappy little routes just so that they can make use of your location that you've sort of taken control of so does it fix a blocking problem no. So the final thing that we don't like about Ticket to Ride is related to one of the previous problems that we said about the routes, yeah? Because you're not going to be drawing that many extra route cards. Once you've completed those two routes that most people go for, yeah? You're just going to be sort of stuck just drawing cards, just trying to mop up the old route. And that can be related to the other point where I'm saying that a card draw, the round of card draw, is mind-numbingly frustrating. And again, I'm getting agitated just thinking about that bloody random card draw. It drives me out of the wall. So this is a game of two halves. You're going to be completing the routes and then you're just going to be twiddling your little sausage thumbs waiting for the game to end. And it makes my eyebrows burn. So to summarise, is Ticket to Ride still worth your time and effort today and in the future? And we are going to say yes, not because we think it's still a good game. Well, I suppose it is. It's fun, right? But the reason that we would recommend to get a ride is for those reasons that we talked about before. It's an entry level, good gateway game for people that haven't played games before. It's good for families and young kids. And it's like a primer for all those more complicated train games like uh, the AT-XX and, you know, the, the more medium weight uh, railways of the world, Steam and all that sort of thing. So if it weren't for... For that, I don't think we could recommend Ticket to Ride. It's dated beyond belief. That random card draw stinks of something that's like 20 years old. It's still a fun game. We're not saying it's not a fun game. We're not saying we don't like it at all. We do enjoy playing this now and again. But it lacks any kind of strategic decisions. There's nothing to do. You're either going to be playing a route or just crossing your fingers, hoping that your card is going to come out of that deck next. And there's one more thing that we forgot to mention about something that does our in this game. And that's the way that you've got to continue continually shuffle the discard pile because where you're discarding in sets you will be drawing sets out of the deck when you shuffle them so you've either got to do that horrible riffle shuffle with the thing that's going to destroy your deck of cards over time or you've got to continually with all the cards continuously and it drives me out of the wall but that being said this game's best used as a light filler game or a family game and we're going to give this maybe three out of five for the simple fact that it's dated and it's just a random card draw but we still enjoy it right so there you go that's ticket to ride ticket to ride europe or any kind of ticket to ride apart from the beatles ticket to ride so remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to our channel leave a comment in that section down below you cheeky bastards we'll see you next time